35 years back, crossing the Atlantic, why did Rice play against Texas? We opt for journeying to the moon to go to the moon. When JFK uttered those renowned words in September of 62, he lacked insight into the future implications for his nation. No one truly did. NASA, at this point, had managed to place a chimp in orbit by November 61. Then, in February 62, they launched astronaut John Blinn on a three-orbit spaceflight, marking the first time an American circled Earth. Safely bringing a human back from orbit was monumental, but now the president had publicly set an unfathomable target, landing on the moon before the 60s ended. The contrast between reaching low Earth orbit and reaching the moon is baffling. These plans aren't in the same league, not even the same sport. It took seven years of unrelenting hard work and a colossal sum to fulfill Kennedy's promise. But the moon journey strained both NASA and the nation. After only a few missions, the Apollo program was halted, waiting for science and technology to catch up. Now, in the 21st century's second decade, we're finally ready. Let's journey to the moon. It's astonishing that five decades after Apollo, we struggle to retrace their path, this honors those early pioneers' ingenuity and highlights the issues in our modern society. Nevertheless, Artemis II seems promising for humanity's return to lunar orbit in a couple of years. A crew of four, including the first woman, Christina Hammock Cook, the first person of color, Victor Blover, and the first Canadian beyond low Earth orbit, Jeremy Hans, led by mission commander Reed Wiseman, will mark this return. This mission follows in Apollo 8's footsteps, aiming to circle the moon and return safely. Apollo 8, an unsung hero, departed on December 21, 1968, and returned on December 27, the first humans to truly leave Earth's bounds. Their accounts focus more on gazing at Earth than the moon, a spiritual experience as they orbited on Christmas Eve, reading Genesis versus Live. It ended a turbulent year with the Vietnam escalation, NLK Jr., and Robert Kennedy's assassinations. The moon journey unified Western society. Yet, this venture is more than space travel. It's transcending the human condition, becoming solar system travelers. Let's delve into the logistics. Artemis II will pass all human spaceflights since Apollo 17. A translunar injection orbit makes ISS trips seem easy. Today, SpaceX's Crew Dragon on a Falcon 9 is the norm. But for Artemis, the SLS rocket with 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust is essential. A 15% power boost from Saturn V. Reaching the moon demands a potent rocket due to the heavy payload of the 22-ton Orion spacecraft and the high orbital trajectory, weighing 5.75 million pounds at launch. The SLS is set to ascend by 500 vertical feet in approximately 7 seconds. This immense acceleration shall persist for the following two minutes until the solid rocket boosters exhaust their thrust and detach from the sides of the SLS. Subsequently, the core stage housing the liquid hydrogen-powered RIS-25 engines will burn for an additional six minutes. This is aimed to clear the upper atmosphere and attain orbital velocity. Around eight minutes into the journey, the service module fairings will disengage along with the launch abort system. These actions will remove the pointed section at the top and the protective covers over the capsule. Now the crew will glimpse outer space for the first time. Shortly thereafter, they will undergo a significant jolt as the main engines shut down and the booster stage separates from the upper stage. The Orion spacecraft will then glide through the atmosphere. Meanwhile, the solar panel array will unfurl itself, and the crew will prepare for the initial burn of the interim cryogenic propulsion stage. They will conduct two burns, the first to elevate the perigee, lowest point in the orbital path, and the second to raise the apogee, highest point in the orbital path. This second burn will propel the crew as far as 1,600 miles above Earth's surface, a distance around seven times greater than the distance to the ISS. Once settled in this orbit, the crew will remain for an entire day, meticulously inspecting the Orion systems from front to back. Every aspect, spanning from life support and habitation systems to exercise equipment, must be flawlessly operational before progressing. During these system checks, the Orion will detach from the interim cryogenic propulsion stage. The crew will then practice manually controlling their spacecraft using the thruster controls. Upon confirming all systems are functioning impeccably, Orion can employ its main engine to execute the translunar injection burn. This marks the two-day point in the mission. 
The reason behind the extended period dedicated to systems checks is due to an impending critical juncture. Once the commitment to reach the moon is made, there is no reversing course. No assistance can be rendered from Earth. The translunar injection burn propels them beyond Earth's gravitational pull, embarking on what's termed a free return trajectory. They're set to enter lunar orbit, taking a wide loop to slingshot around the moon and hand back to Earth. The estimated time to reach the moon from here is about four days. This route is less direct than past missions. They won't closely circle the moon, just fly around it before heading home. The farthest point around the moon, or apogee, will take them about 6,500 miles beyond its surface into deep space. This plane resembles Apollo 13's path, though that wasn't intentional. The crew had to improvise a return route to save their dying spacecraft. Orion's experience will be an upgrade from Apollo's days. The computer system is 20,000 times faster, and its 315 cubic feet offer about 30% more space. There's a private toilet like an aeroplane bathroom and even a mini gym with a rowing machine for crew fitness. The flight duration of Artemis II isn't decided yet, either 10 days or 3 weeks. The Orion can sustain 4 crew members for up to 21 days, and NASA aims for a thorough shakedown of the vehicle. Artemis II's data will shape Artemis III and beyond. Details about Artemis III depend on months of analyzing Artemis II data. Orion's main engine will perform a final burn to head back to Earth. The return journey takes 4 days. The roughest part is the final leg. While Crew Dragon from the ISS arrives at 17,000 miles per hour Orion, descending from a higher altitude, hits up to 25,000 miles per hour. The looter capsule's return window has a 2-degree margin for error. Too high, it skips into space. Too low, it burns up. But skilled rocket scientists handle it. Orion's exterior reaches 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than Crew Dragon's return. Inside, the temperature stays comfortable at 70-80 degrees Fahrenheit. After plasma burns off, it's smooth sailing on 11 parachutes into the Pacific Ocean. So there you have it, a million-mile journey to the moon, not done in over 50 years. Our generation will see it again. Like Apollo 8, Artemis II arrived in a turbulent time. Let's hope this wonder of space flight can unite us, even briefly.